Hi everyone, so the other day I had a debate with Sverage, and we were debating whether a vegan or predominantly raw meat-based diet is better for human health, and I brought up the argument that plant-based diets are associated with the lowest risk of chronic disease, and there are macro and micronutrients found in animal products like cholesterol, saturated fat, and heme iron, which have been found to increase the risk of chronic diseases, including heart disease. Sverage didn't really have any arguments or evidence against this. He simply dismissed scientific evidence and relied on anecdotal claims, but Sverage did argue that there are certain nutrients that are only found in animal products that are essential for human health that vegans cannot get either from plant foods or even from supplements. Now, I did feel that I was able to argue against these claims during the debate, but I wasn't as well prepared as I would have liked to have been, and uh, Sverage did ask some questions that I was just unable to answer because I lacked knowledge on the topic of vitamins and vitamin supplements. So I just wanted to go back and refute some of Sverage's claims that I felt I didn't adequately respond to during the debate. Uh, as you know, vitamin D is an animal hormone, which is not found in plants. Uh, calcitriol, the end form. So people in Finland and many vegans in general, Happy, Happy Healthy Vegan recently released a blood test result. He was deficient in vitamin D even though he lives in LA, but uh, especially people where they get no sun for pretty much nine months and who like to live there. Where's your empathy for those humans who can get vitamin D and end up being sick and get kids who get rickets because they don't get vitamin D? Because the only way for them to get it with a natural diet, which is for them to eat fish, meat, etc., is of course to eat uh, animal foods because it's only found in animal fat. It's an animal hormone. A vegan diet is impossible in places where there is no sun. Go on Amazon, vegan D3, and then there you go, vegan D3, bioenhanced. It's made from a type of fungus, lichen. Um, you can get all the D3 you need. It's a pretty reliable source of D3 too because you don't have to rely on eating specific types of animals, specific types of organs. Um, it's cheaper, easier to get. You can get way higher doses than you could just eating eating it through foods. So, do you, do you know what the supplement is called? What the actual molecule is that they sell? Okay, what is it? No, no I'm just asking. You don't know? Okay, well, it's uh, D3. I don't, I, I know the, sorry? Well, they usually say that what they sell is colocalciferol, which is which is what uh, is created when sun hits the skin and you create it from cholesterol, just like most hormones, because that's why it's called colocalciferol. So where in uh, moss fungi is there cholesterol? I don't know much about fungi, um, but they do produce D3, colociferol. Right, but they don't because cholecalciferol is made from animal lipids. That's why it's called chole because it comes from cholesterol. You, <laughs> you just fell into a trap. You blindly appeal to authority, to black and white text. You have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so Sverage made a few claims here. First, Sverage claimed that vegans cannot get vitamin D either through their diet or through supplements. This is false. Fungi are well known for producing vitamin D2 when exposed to UV light, and as I pointed out in the debate, there are vegan D3 supplements which are made from a type of fungus called lichen. However, Sverge claimed that vitamin D3, also known as colociferol, is not produced from plants, it is only produced by animals as cholesterol is required to produce cholesterol, hence the uh, col as in cholesterol prefix in cholesterol. And Sverige believes that only animals are able to produce cholesterol. Now, I'm going to be relying on the information in this paper titled Vitamin D in Plants, a review of occurrence analysis and biosynthesis. First of all, cholesterol is a type of sterol, and although cholesterol is the major sterol found in animals, it is also present in plants. Typically, cholesterol accounts for 1-2% to of total plant sterols. So, Sverige was incorrect when he claimed that cholesterol only occurs in animals. These sterols occur in both plants and animals, and in plants, cholesterol is used to produce cholesterol, also known as vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is formed by UVB exposure of 7-dehydrocholesterol, which is found in both plants and animals, 
And although the biosynthesis of 7-dehydrocholesterol is well understood in animals, Currently, according to this review, it is not understood in plants. However, the authors did provide a hypothetical biosynthetic route for cholesterol production in plants, and you can see this in figure eight. And the authors also hypothesize that cholesterol and 7-dehydrocholesterol may be formed in plants through lanisterol, as is known from animals. But regardless, vitamin D3, aka cholecifrol, and its provitamin precursor, 7-dehydrocholesterol, have been identified in several plant species. So Sverige was simply wrong about vitamin D. Both vitamin D2, ergocholecifrol, and vitamin D3, cholecifrol, are found in many different plants. But currently, when you buy a vegan vitamin D3 supplement, these companies uh, seem to prefer to use lichen, which is a type of fungus, and I'd imagine they do this because this particular type of plant uh, produces the most amount of cholecifrol. And both ergocholecifrol and cholecifrol supplements can be used to treat and uh, prevent vitamin D deficiency in humans, so Sverige was just wrong on all accounts here. What's also interesting in this paper is that they highlight the fact that fish, which has the highest dietary concentration of vitamin D3 of any food, likely get their D3 from various forms of algae. So even the animals you eat get their D3 from plants. And lastly, I just wanted to refute an argument Sverige made about vitamin A. I would like to also discuss vitamin A. Okay, sure. Because uh, I don't know if you've seen my videos about it, the studies that I linked that there's people who have these genetic mutations, as we talked about in the last debate a little bit, who can convert to vitamin A. And then you were saying that there's supplements, but again, it's an animal vitamin and there's no proof that there's any source of it. Okay, so first of all, vegans do not have a higher risk of vitamin A deficiency compared to meat eaters, so this is just a complete non-issue. Uh, Sverige will point out that, you know, sometimes conversion rates of beta carotene to vitamin A are low, and you can only get fully formed vitamin, vitamin A from animal products. Well, the fact still remains that vegans are not at a higher risk of vitamin A deficiency, so this is not a nutrient of concern for vegans, and this just really isn't a good argument for, you know, the consumption of animal products. Secondly, Sverige is just plain wrong about some people not being able to convert beta carotene into vitamin A. Some people convert beta carotene at a slower rate, and there have been some genes that have been identified that are responsible for this, but I haven't come across any research showing that some people are completely incapable of converting beta carotene to vitamin A. So Sverige just doesn't have evidence for his claims, and if you do convert beta carotene at a slower rate, then just eat more beta carotene. Uh, there are foods like sweet potatoes that are so massively high in beta carotene that again, this is just a complete non-issue. And lastly, Sverige claimed that you can only get fully formed vitamin A in the form of retinol from animal products, but this is not true. There are vegan vitamin A supplements in the form of retinol. Uh, retinol can be chemically synthesized using beta ionine, and there are several different techniques used to do this, and they are all outlined in this paper. Paper. There's also a company that makes a vegan retinol supplement where the retinol is derived from non-GMO carrots. I don't know the exact process involved, but the product page on Amazon states that they derive retinol from a renaturing and assimilation process. So Sverige's vitamin claims were just plain false. He wasn't able to demonstrate that vegans cannot get the nutrition they need either from their diet or through supplementation. Uh, he also wasn't able to demonstrate that vegans have a higher risk of vitamin or mineral deficiencies. And most importantly, he wasn't able to show that vegans tend to be less healthy than meat eaters. So if, if uh, Sverige still disagrees with any of the information I provided in this video, then I would be interested in having another debate on the topic. And my debate proposition would be that vegans can get all of the nutrition they need either through diet, uh, their diet or supplementation. Uh, and if they cannot get nutrition from their diet, then supplementation is a better method of getting these nutrients than uh, from eating animal products. And if you like this video, maybe consider 
consider supporting me on Patreon or through my website. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for clothing, then check out the Vegan Gain store and also check out Quality Gains for personalized online coaching plans. If you use the discount code VG10, you'll get 10% off and all links are in the description down below. And as always, keep making those vegan and nutrient gains. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.